hello ho ha it is I, CJ's Goose, back for episode 4 of the Gooseville Saga. We begin today's journey, the first circle where we rested on the hilltop overlooking the sea, and the second circle shows you where our new and final home location will be. Here we have what we need to begin the Gooseville journey. I thought I would show you a quick look at our basic setup, along with the map wall that we completed followed by planting a few bamboo stalks for sticks, saving my poor axe and wood. Sadly, in the beginning episodes I had a large amount of lag issues. This should be resolved as we move on. Next, I wanted to venture into the nether, so I popped a quick portal down. We need several things like quartz and soul sand if we are to make observers and lifts. I'm still having a few issues with the sound and trying to balance out how it all works. So bear with me on that please. The Soul Sand Valley, although perfect, is terrifically scary and not the place for me. We had some lovely quartz and some basalt and obviously the soul sand that I collected along the way. This will be perfect for making some lifts. We can always collect some more later, I just wanted the essentials. Or we'll need it later for the nether wart as well. It's a tricky spawn point, so we'll just shove some dirt in there. Back at home, I started the next phase, the Guardian's takeover. This was horrific. Never, ever, ever use scaffolding. I spent such a long time trying to fix this mess under continuous attack from the relentless drowned. I have no idea how I survived at times. The lag was atrocious because I'd just used the boat. Um, later we do fix some of this issue, um, so apologies these early ones are a little bit tricky. We will get there eventually. Another drowned with the trident continuously attacking me. It was an absolute nightmare. I, I've shortened this to a little bit, but I must have spent, I don't know, half an hour to an hour on this we were on the live stream as well I think and it was oh it was just awful I've never taken so much time to take over a guardian before I thought using a scaffold would be great because you can just hit it with a sword but it didn't work and then apparently I tried to use beef that didn't work either don't hit the scaffold with beef it doesn't work in the end I decided the only thing I could do was probably to mine the block underneath the scaffold which as you can see worked. 
then I made a, a hideous mistake. I should have tried to place the prismarine around the conduit, but I thought it wasn't working because it had been placed already. I think that is correct. I think if it's placed and then you remove the block, it doesn't always work. So I then used sand and then I had to remove the sand as well. But we finally got there. Finally. So once the prismarine blocks were in place and we could breathe and see underwater, we were able to start the dangerous stage two, battling the Elder Guardians. They were not too bad to fight and they each gave me a sponge, which was brilliant. I can see you. And the tentacles sticking through. I do use a, a bow quite often with the Guardians, it does help. Um, I suppose a trident would be quite good too, but I don't normally have a trident uh, with enchantments on that early. We found the next one. Obviously this whole process would have been easier with water breathing potions and then I wouldn't have had all of these problems um, trying to set the conduit up but I did have the conduit and I didn't have any potions and there was no way I was going to try and get blaze rods just yet. One more to go and then the Guardians are mine and we have a big secret plan for this. Um, for those that have watched the stream you will know what my secret plan was but at the time of recording this was a big secret plan because I've never seen it done before so I didn't want to let that through. Next we needed the secret plan part one, fighting the illagers for their allies and loot in their home. So I battled away. The spawn, not the spawn point, the previous location is just over the water, uh, so this is quite far away from where we were. Oh, it's, it's a little bit further over the way, you can see we're in the middle of the map there. The downstairs was empty, but then some of them tried to sneak up on me. found where they were hiding and had lots of lovely beef to eat again sorry Mook for those of you that don't know don't know or don't have a watch the streams AJ Mook is my son he's now 10 and sometimes can be heard in my streams we call him Mook or the Mookster and his favorite animal is a cow hence the references to the Mook um, the spiders decided to join in too, which was lovely of them, or him, her. There's no more baddies, so we're going to venture upstairs. Oh, I'm still hungry apparently. And there's another guy. Fish bash bosh, and another one down. How tall is this thing? I thought it was already done apparently not there's the chest and the loot as you can see is atrocious but I will take the uh, I will take it all because every, I take everything I'll even take the chest especially early on because it takes so much to get everything and of course there's some very nice dark oak logs just laying around so we'll borrow those I mean obviously take them I'm not giving them back I am wondering uh, looking at this later on if we should try to build some type of raid farm here I've never thought about a raid farm before but I am considering it properly um, there is a village near here and I'm wondering whether we could make some type of raid farm what do you think so let me know in the comments I decided to jump down, destroying a little more of their house.
venturing out of the water, we headed to the reason for our coming, the alleys. They were new in the game when we recorded this and it was extremely exciting and I loved them. So we managed to collect them, um, although they wouldn't come out, so we had to go back and remove a little bit more of the fences because they were still trapped. We gave them ink so that they would follow us. Uh, I think if you give them an object, they will then follow you. And then I walked all the way home because I was worried about losing them. The following stage was to utilise them to collect as much ink as I desired. I thought this was a very helpful way of collecting ink, especially early on in the game. I've started to set up a little collection system for them. And as you can see, they were doing a, a fine job of collecting ink for me. Soon I created a quick enchanting area. As you can see, I generally don't ever start with a starter home. I just shove everything outside and it's fine until a creeper comes along and blows you up, which has happened and I have lost many, many items to being blown up by creepers and then blowing up my things. It's not recommended. We haven't got quite enough books yet, so we're only getting an enchantment level of 24. And so I thought I would just show you, I always fish in the early game, and I do quite often throughout as well. Although it's a bit boring, I do often win lots of goodies, uh, such as the books, and the best one is the infinity bows. And obviously at times it can really help with the XP, and you get name tags. There's so, many, so much loot that you get through fishing. I, um, I always do it. Um, at the minute we've just got the standard bow and when you start fishing you can often get much better ones improved. And it fishes much quicker in the rain. There was a ground, I tried to sleep but I couldn't because a skeleton thought he could steal my boat. But I disagreed, and after rescuing my boat from his bony clutches, I moved on to mining. Again, it's very important, and we need more diamonds. I don't actually think, I think at this point I didn't have any diamonds. I know I've got, I've obviously had a diamond pickaxe, and I've made an enchantment table, but I th think that must have been from when I first went mining I can't quite remember now or maybe looted from the villagers I take all of the coal and the iron that I can find and luckily I have a fortune pickaxe that I found in one of the ruined portals just remember to collect the correct items as gold cannot collect everything unfortunately I did notice looking back that I didn't fortune pick the iron and I can't remember if you can collect iron with gold or not I'm thinking that you can't which may be why I didn't do it so just be warned don't just collect with the gold because it will disappear I dug all the way down and then I decided to make myself a little hidey hole I was surprised I didn't cut through a cave so I had to create a little place, gave myself a little chest and a blasting furnace, cut away a little bit more and then I could give myself a bed which apparently I needed to sleep in, in a little hole. And of course we need a crafting table so I popped that in too. I started to tunnel through, there had been lots of mob noises, so I knew there were, and I thought it was really lovely. I had visits from so many locals, they all came to see me, there was a witch, 
um, somewhere. That was quite a scary noise to begin with. I gave myself a door so that I could get in and out easier and be a bit more protected. There we go, there was a witch. There were so many others. There were spiders and zombies and skeletons alike. I managed to find more iron, which was really good. As you can see, I had a good look round. I put quite a few torches round. Oh, there was a creeper look and more zombies. But it wasn't just that. It was lovely. Look, they came in groups. They must have been shy and they... They wanted their friends to come along to see me. Oh, it's even a nice little zombie villager. But I wasn't ready to capture. I, I mean, um, make friends with him yet. So we had to say goodbye. I lit everywhere up so that we could get in and out of here much more safely. Quite a few of those creepers, they blew each other up, so that was useful. And the slimes, oh, they were so excited to see me. They literally jumped at me. Look, they were jumping all over. Even the spider was so excited he was jumping. These ones jumped right off the cliff. It was amazing. And then there they were, diamonds. Yay. I managed to sort them out and I used my iron pickaxe to get them. And there was two. Wow, that was exciting. Any more? No. Back at the Guardians and the Alleys, now the Ink Farm. We set it up a little bit more. One of the Alleys needed a quick rest in my boat, but they were working very hard. Once I remembered how to place the observers together, uh, which I seem to have found extremely tricky. We were going to make a little bit of noise using the note block. As you can see, they have actually been collecting quite well. I've got nearly two stacks of ink, and it's just so much easier. You're not constantly attacked by the horrible guardians every few seconds. So here we go, we placed a little note block which obviously makes some hideous noise. We do need to learn how to do this a little bit better. Oh look, um, nearly two and a quarter stacks. It's amazing. However, once I'd set this little collection system up to make it easier, the little alleys uh, decided to play a game of catch and throw because no one could get it in the hopper. It was very cute watching them. One of them threw it, one of them caught it, one of them threw it back. No one got it in the hopper. So they were doing it for ages. Anyway, thanks for watching. This has been CJ's Goose, and see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.